Hi, this is your host Sobhan Bharti and welcome to a special edition of TFR Insights. And today we have two guests from Linode, Dan Spitaro, uh, Director of the Infrastructure Operations at Linode and Maddie Presland, Product Marketing Coordinator at Linode. Dan, Maddie, first of all, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Today we are going to talk about Linode's uh, unique independent approach to uh, networking and how it benefits uh, customers. I mean, if you look at cloud, networking is one of the three pillars, you know, if I'm not wrong, of the cloud. Storage is there, compute is there. But networking is, is plays a very critical role, whether it's, it's not only just moving the packets from here or there, also security as well. So, so can you talk about, I will start with Dan because you handle the technical side. How critical is networking for cloud experience? Yeah, networking is very critical, obviously. Uh, like you said, it's a fundamental building block of the cloud. And without a, you know, a fast, reliable, feature-rich, and affordable network, uh, that's what our customers need and want. And Matty, uh, from your side, you know, since he mentioned that's what customers want, so from customers' expectation, what do they expect from network? So it's kind of funny that one of the most important factors of the cloud experience is something that developers can't see or interact with, so they don't ha really have any control over it. So it's up to the provider to make sure that the network is really strong because of how much that affects application performance and uh, cost savings on whether or not your network is configured to include more or less network transfer. How different is networking in cloud native, cloud centric world versus traditional data center sites? Because, which also means that not only it's different, it also poses some unique challenges also in the in this space. So, so talk about uh, the the challenges that cloud centric computing pose to networking as compared to uh, traditional networking. Yeah, so I think that's the point of being a cloud infrastructure provider, right? We're trying to abstract away as much complexity for the customer as possible. Uh, they just want to run their workloads, run their workloads reliably, and not have to worry about getting into all the details behind how the cloud works. You know, that's our job, uh, and there's tons of details that go into all of that. So building a cloud network, obviously, uh, is pretty complex, and there's, there's a bunch of different uh, technologies that go into it. You know, I think the main technologies that I like to talk about are interconnection, you know, backbone, and the data center network. As far as interconnection, you know, we put a ton of effort into understanding, you know, what external networks around the globe are important to our customers. Uh, like I personally fly around the world and go to all these peering conferences, meet with, you know, other networks to, to develop these peering relationships and get our customers the best and most direct connectivity possible, uh, which allows for the lowest latency, the least chance of variability due to the internet. So if we hand off a connection, you know, to these networks, our customers are getting direct connectivity, uh, which is, you know, obviously far superior to having to ride, you know, unknown networks, unknown hops, unknown routers. Uh, and then we also tie all our, our pops in or our regions uh, with a backbone. So we have a unified global ASN. Customers can reliably transfer data between our regions. It stays on our backbone, which eliminates the variability of the internet also, uh, which is awesome. And then as far as the data center network, you know, it's, we have to be able to scale, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of instances, provide features, uh, and all that is done, you know, using various overlays and, and open source technologies. One more thing is that uh, if you look at Linode, uh, people are using it in different capacities. Uh, they are running different kind of workloads. There are some run sites, some do a lot of machine learning. Uh, so there are two things that are happening. First of all, the amount of data that people are sending across from their local machines to cloud. And second is uh, the, the size of the data. So how, how does, because uh, as compared to your legacy or traditional you know, networking here, you are dealing with not only traffic, but load of traffic also. Yes, yeah, so we have to you know, be ahead of that with capacity planning as far as the internet edge. We have you know, great relationships with other content providers, other eyeball providers to make sure that we can accept that traffic. And then obviously in the data center network, we have to build you know, very large pipes. Uh, you know, we don't worry about QoS because we just run big pipes. You know, we don't have to worry about that if you have the bandwidth ahead of time. Right. Can you talk about some of the, uh, to, to tackle some of these challenges, uh, 
talk about some of the innovations that are going, especially in the networking space. First of all, networking is becoming all software defined networking. Uh, network boxes are becoming white boxes. They are no longer proprietary black boxes. Uh, and also talk about that because of this, this uh, evolution, uh, what does the next generation network look like and what work Leno is doing within the ecosystem to move towards the next generation network? Yes, the next generation network for Linode is you know, disaggregation, right? We disaggregated our, our software from our hardware at the top rack. So we don't have to, we can shop around to multiple ASIC vendors. Uh, we can run various uh, types of software because now the top rack is just a commodity, right? We kind of commoditize the top rack and the spine and as and we push routing down to the host, down to the hypervisor and the various hosts that we have. So the, most of the complexity is right where we want it at the hypervisor level, because that's what we control the best, right? Uh, with our orchestration systems, all of our telemetry. And then now we've kind of unified the stack. Uh, so we run Linux at the top of rack and we can, we can run our same orchestration systems, uh, our same monitoring and telemetry systems. The systems people and the network people speak the same language now, right? Because it's all Linux, it's all unified. And that's kind of the push that we've made for our next generation network. So Dan, if you go back to, uh, as you're talking about uh, Linode as a service provider, does that also make Linode an ISP in, in, in its own capacity? I think it does because we have to manage, you know, all the variables ourselves. We can't leave anything up to chance. So we have to be able to, you know, take the packet from, the, the lowest level on the VM and deliver it all the way to the destination it's going to on the internet. You know, so we have to make sure that we have control over all the variables. What does it mean uh, to customers? How, how does it impact customer experience? Yeah, I think it goes back to what I was saying before where we're able to control as many variables as possible. We can control the destiny of the customer uh, from a network perspective. We can make sure we are delivering these packets the most efficient way possible, either that's on our own network or externally with our peering partners, uh, paid and private. Cloud space is a very clouded, crowded, very busy space. How does Linode's own networking kind of differs or differentiate itself from either competitors or partners? Yeah, I think it's the amount of effort that we put into uh, all the different, from all the different stacks of our network. You know, from interconnection, like I said, going out to these different partners, uh, these different conferences, understanding the landscape of each region. You know, Mumbai is completely a different landscape than Dallas, Texas, right? Uh, so we have to really understand on the ground, you know, what do customers want? What networks do they want to connect to? What peers do they need to, to connect to? Uh, and then once we figure that out, we can then build, you know, a, a proper bandwidth blend to service, you know, all of our customers, uh, which run the full scope. Awesome. Uh, now, uh, Mary, I'll come back to you, and which is about uh, what are the benefits that customers get from this kind of networking setup? Absolutely. So the changes that we've made to our network in the last couple of years uh, enable us to layer um, more free and paid uh, networking products um, that we weren't able to offer before. So earlier this year, we released network-wide advanced DDoS protection, which is something that everyone worries about with their websites and applications. Um, one new product that we're introducing to Linode that is actually in beta currently is a new cloud firewall. So that gives uh, customers more control over the traffic that is reaching their Linodes. And we also have a, a free VLAN service coming soon to beta. Dan, can you also talk about how much proprietary or how much open source uh, technologies you're using uh, for your own networking stack? In the past, we used to use a lot of you know, proprietary vendors, closed systems. Uh, a lot of the protocols you know, were not opened to, to provide redundancy to our network. Uh, we decided to move away from that path. You know, we'd rather move toward more towards an open source uh, network. So when we disaggregated uh, our software from our hardware, you know, we actually launched something that we call LNOS, the Linode Network Operating System, uh, which runs on Linux. Uh, it runs our full monitoring and orchestration stack. Uh, it uses switch dev to kind of program the forwarding information so everything is, is line rate. Uh, we actually looked at other you know, open source projects like Sonic and uh, soon to, I think Dent is gaining traction. You know, LNOS could spin into one of those. Uh, but right now for the features that we need, uh, it serves its purpose. 
So uh, is it like an internal Linode project or you know the code base is available on GitHub where anybody can see and collaborate? Yeah, right now it's a, it's an internal Linode project, but it does leverage a lot of a lot of the stuff that's already out there. Awesome. Uh, so all the work that Linode is doing in this space, can you talk about what are the clear benefits that customer gets from this work? Yeah, so we're able, obviously, to, to pass on any savings that we can have to customers and keep our cloud affordable and reliable. And like I said before, we control, the more variables that we control, uh, the more telemetry we have into everything, we can provide our customers the, the best experience. So like we don't want our customers to have to worry about you know what's under the covers. We just want all their packets to get to where they're supposed to go as fast as possible. Maddie, Dan, thank you so much for taking time out from your schedule and talk about the work that the node is doing in the networking space. And I look forward to talk to you again because there are so many things that we have to talk about. So once again, thank you. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you.